we're going to talk about quickly this news is obviously breaking in the uk if you're not in the uk you probably don't give a crap but this is courtesy of the guardian chris pincher one of the former members of the tory government um mp sorry has been accused of sexual misconduct sexual assault whatever it may be over the years and for whatever reason um Boris Johnson thought in his infinite wisdom that it would be um it would be kind of wise to promote him into a job knowing full well that he was accused of what he was accused of and now it's transpired that he has been accused of more ac accusations and now off the back of that two of his kind of high I would say profile um, employees or team members in terms of Savage Javid and Rishi Sunak have resigned which is a real big thing because for the most part Boris Johnson has been able to kind of I feel like get away with murder really for the most part, right? He seems to be able to kind of withstand any sort of public controversy. Um, obviously, the major one being the stuff with the COVID lockdown and the fact that it was now been revealed that he and the number 10 um, offices and his government in general hosted many, many parties when we were, were in the kind of most severe lockdown, when, we, when it was being threatened that if you were hosting parties that you'd be fined, you know, upwards of £10,000. The whole entire Tory government were doing parties behind closed doors having champagne eating cheese and just being absolute cunts while the rest of the country were having to basically you know be alone at home without seeing family members for the best part of what two years or something like that right absolutely insane and he somehow managed to survive that um because he just survives it right because it feels like no one in his government really wants to stand up to him or maybe for the most part they're all just as bad as him and if they try to get behind they just try to kind of throw stones then it might you know kind of end up backfiring on them and people might be finding out about their secrets but regardless this is a quick timeline of the allegations against chris pincher because i think it's quite interesting because i find it interesting that this is a thing that is giving him the most pressure I, I didn't feel this much pressure off the back of the whole like covid lockdown parties thing so this is interesting to see but it's also interesting to see that this isn't i don't feel like being dealt with the same level of severity that if it was involving females and it goes to show how there are such a double standards when it comes to um, sexual assault concerning men. For the most part, people don't tend to really care. Um, but people are trying to care about this because I guess they want the ulterior motive of getting Boris out of office, it feels like. But if you really get down to the brass necks of it and the raw details, it feels like it's a bit of an afterthought because essentially he was still given a job. He was still an MP after his allegations anyway. So anyway, Guardian timeline. November 2017. Pincher quit the whip's office after former professional rower and Tory activist Alex Story accused him of making unwanted passes, massaging his neck while telling him he would go far in a party and acting like a pound shop Harvey Weinstein towards the, him in 2001. He denied the allegations and the party investigation later cleared Pincher of wrongdoing. So already there's a red flag there, right? In 2017. 2019 in July, Pincher was brought back into the government by Boris Johnson after a period of the back benches becoming a foreign officer office minister and then a housing minister so two years after those allegations Boris thought you know what fuck that let's bring him back in he's good at his job even though he likes to touch up men um you know unwantingly and he seems to be horny 24 7 let's bring him back in regardless and this is also a thing of it. it's also the back this is also the back of the other mp being caught in flipping the house of commons watching porn and shit like absolutely mad anyway we continue february 2022 Pincher was made Deputy Chief Whip by Johnson. The Sunday Times reports that a male Tory MP informed the Whip's office at the same time that Pincher had made unwanted passes at him. So already, he hasn't learned his lesson from 2017 and he's still making passes at people that don't want to be touched. All right? Um, made unwanted pass at him. Pincher has denied acting inappropriately. Um, Conservative MPs have also said they informed their Whips about general concerns about Pincher's conduct. I also find it interesting that they keep using this thing unwanted pass you never hear this language when it comes to women whenever it's a sexual assault sexual misconduct allegation it always feels as if the guy was like in the bushes and he jumped out at the person right and kind of jumped on them and sort of pinned them to the ground and tried to do whatever you never get the you never get the story that oh no they were actually he was actually trying to hook up with this person read the signals wrong and then he got in a bit of a bind it's always no this person jumped out of a fucking bush but when it comes to men, it's an unwanted pass. No, it's not unwanted pass. Like, this is a professional environment. It's a workplace. Why are you even making a pass at me in the first place? This is, this is no place to do that sort of nonsense. Keep your hands and your eyes to yourself and leave me alone. But anyway, we continue. Pinch has denied that acting appropriately. Conservative MPs have also said that they informed their whips about the general concerns about Pinch's conduct. The announcement of his promotion was delayed 
by referral to the Cabinet Office Proper Propriety and Office Unit to investigate the allegations against Pincher had been reported by the whip. So they already knew something was up. They already knew they already did a bit of a fell apart, but they still continued on. July 20, sorry, June 29, um, 2022, Pincher attended an event in the Conservative Friends of Cyprus at the Carlton Club in Piccadilly. Uh-oh, free drinks involved. He was accused by two men of drunkenly groping them and had to be put in a taxi home. One of them told another whip, Sarah Dines, who reported the matter to a chief whip, Chris Henton Harris. Now, if this happens as an isolated incident, fair enough, right? But off the back of this in 2017, you'd imagine somebody has to be put in a cab home forcibly, drunk out of their mind after randomly trying to touch up two random guys. This might be the end. You should be calling them the next day and saying, hey, please hand me a resignation. This isn't the place for you. Let's do this properly. Doesn't happen. The 3rd of June, Heaton Harris investigated the incident the Pincher offered his resignation and the son reported on the evening that he had resigned as Deputy Chief Whip and Pincher released a letter saying he had got drunk and embarrassed himself. <laughs> Johnson declined to suspend him from the party saying the matter was closed. So he, he resigns for being a sex pest, for being a creep, but Johnson still doesn't want to, you know, fire him from the, from the flipping, um, from the Tory government. Number 10 deputy, and this is July 1st, uh, a deputy picture post spokesperson insisted that the Prime Minister was not aware of the allegations against Pitch at the time and promoting him in February. So you're telling me he didn't know about the allegations? Oh, God almighty, he's such a liar. And now, of course, we're at where we're at, where now he's saying that he does know that he was aware of it, but it was a little too late. And now, off the back of that, we also got news here that these two main dudes in Tory's government or in you know Boris's government have now decided to resign because as uh, Richie Sunak said um, earlier on today enough is enough and I just I don't know man I don't know enough may not be enough he might end up surviving this again but I just feel like as a dude it's just interesting to see how different stuff concerning sexual assault with men gets treated as opposed to women because I don't think anybody would have a job let alone be able to kind of get promoted if they had so many allegations of misconduct against women in their workplace against him if he was a man. But the fact that he was able to get away with it so much, I, if anything, is a bad look on the government, is a bad look on our society. And it also shows that maybe behind closed doors, there is some really, really messed up stuff that goes on at number 10, that that is allowed, that people kind of, you know, turn a blind eye to it. It's absolutely heinous, man, absolutely heinous. Hope he gets suspended, hope he gets fired, whatever it may be. And I hope this is the end of the Boris Johnson's government because it just feels like he runs an absolute shit show of a party, in it? Really does, man, has the most deplorable people. But maybe it's not a shit show because I'm thinking about it at the moment, right? Just come in my head pause um maybe boris johnson's government isn't really deplorable maybe this is just what governments really are like but because whatever for every reason this conservative government is just so unscrupulous they're so unapologetic they have no shame they kind of wear it with some sort of pride that they're pieces of shit similar to like donald trump you remember when donald trump was like you know president of the united states a lot of the thing that i saw with donald trump's presidency was more so that he gave dickheads or he gave pieces of shit an excuse to be pieces of shit like people that always wanted to kind of go to you know left-wing um rallies and antagonize people and just be cunts about stuff they were finally got given an excuse with donald trump like they finally got given the excuse to kind of be, be, really be their true selves and i feel like maybe the tory government isn't actually feels full of pieces of shit it's just full of people who are actually being honest and not trying to pretend like they're good people do you know what i mean we're pieces of shit we're in government you know, you voted us in, haha, ha, too late, you can't vote us out anymore after another however many years it may be. And even then, we're still going to have jobs forever. Haha, ha, shame on you. And we keep it moving. So maybe that's the case. I'm not really too sure. But either way, it would be nice as just a regular civilian to see that the rules do apply to others. Because I don't think if you were a, the CEO of a regular corporation and you managed to overlook your... Um, new hire or promoted persons um, checkered sexual assault allegations passed and then it came to light I don't think you'd have a job you'd also have to walk you know what I mean if that person walked you have to walk too because you approved of their promotion knowing full well of what they'd done in the past but you know unfortunately life isn't fair so most likely Boris will still have a job and everything will just keep continuing on because there'll be another tragedy that'll turn around there'll be another tragedy around the corner that people will be paying attention to and everyone will forget about this unfortunately it is what it is isn't it